Today we'll be talking about sound and the speed of sound. Sound waves are longitudinal waves formed by a vibrating object causing a series of what's called compressions. In our book it's called condensations or high pressured regions and low pressured regions which are called rarefactions. So if you have a, a vibrating object like a tuning fork, it's moving back and forth, it's compressing areas and making low pressured areas as it moves back and forth. Let me show you that a little bit better on a blow up of this. As the tuning fork moves back and forth, it compresses the air and it pulls it apart making a vacuum. And those series of compressions and vacuums travel through the medium and is known as sound. Here's another look at air molecules in a sound wave. The condensation is similar to a compression pulse on a spring. This high pressure region travels through the air as did the compression on a spring. So you have this compression on a spring, this high pressured area or condensation will travel through the medium, through the, the medium just as it did on the spring. And just like with a spring, if you take two adjacent areas, for example, a compression and a compression, and the same thing would be true here, that would be a wavelength. So a wavelength is the um, distance between two adjacent condensations or two adjacent rarefactions. Individual air molecules are not carried along with the wave. They actually only vibrate in place. Um, they vibrate with whatever the source is moving at. So what's happening here is that the source or the speaker is moving in and out. It's causing air molecules next to it to move in and out. Okay, But those individual molecules aren't carried with the wave. They only send their message to the next molecule which vibrates back and forth, which sends it to the next one, which sends it to the next one, eventually moves your eardrum in and out. So how fast these um, condensations are formed per second is called the frequency of the wave, um, the sound wave. And if you happen to have a frequency that's um, a constant frequency, then you get what's called a pure tone. And normal human hearing has a range between 20 and 20,000 hertz, which means that the vibrating source is moving back at the lowest end 20 times per second at the highest end, 20,000 times per second. So outside of our hearing range, you have what's called infrasonic, which is less than 20,000 hertz, and elephants can hear in this, this range. And you have ultrasonic, which is above 20,000 hertz, and this is what they use for ultrasonic imaging. Remember, the higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength. Because if the velocity remains constant in a medium, then if you increase the frequency, the wavelength has to get smaller. So with a smaller wavelength, we can see smaller objects than with wave larger wavelengths. So by using um, ultrasounds, we're able to see um, in more detail because the wavelengths are really small because the frequency is so high. The speed of sound depends on the medium. It depends on how fast one particle can transfer its motion or message to another particle. In general, it travels faster in solids, then in liquids, then in gases. So it travels the slowest in gases, as you can see here, and the fastest in solids. The speed is determined by such factors as the atomic spacing and mass. So in a solid, the atomic space is much closer than in a gas, so therefore it travels faster in a solid than in a gas. It also depends on the mass. Um, for example, in a gas, a helium atom is much lighter, has less mass than an oxygen atom, so it's easier to move, so it travels faster. The atomic spacing and the molecular motion or temperature, for example, hotter air travels faster than slower air because the molecules are already moving faster so they can pass the message faster. And the elasticity of a material. Um, this means how fast the 
individual atoms can deform and move and come back to their original shape. Uh, so the more elastic it is, the faster the speed will be. Okay, there's a rule of thumb for estimating how far away a thunderstorm is. After you see a flash of lightning, count off the seconds until the thunder is heard. Divide that number by five. The result gives the approximate distance in miles to the thunderstorm. Why does it work? Why does this rule work? Well, first of all, we consider the time it takes the lightning to hit our eyes. Well, the lightning doesn't hit our eyes, but the light from the lightning to hit our eyes is almost instantaneous because the speed of light is so incredibly fast as compared to the speed of sound. But let's say that once you see the lightning, the sound will travel almost one mile in the five seconds. So what does this mean? Well, what it means is that in each second is traveled a fifth of a mile, which is about 340 meters, or 345 meters, if you're looking at how many meters this is for a full mile. And that's basically what the speed of um, sound is, about 340 meters per second. So after five seconds, it's covered about 1,600 meters or one mile. So if you see a lightning strike and you count to five before you hear the thunder, the lightning hit about one mile away. If you're able to count to 10, it's two miles away. 